What's up everybody, Ashton here from Without Code, here to introduce our new Combo Slider widget. Now this is a unique new widget with a very particular purpose, to act as a normal slider that changes a block of text at the same time, a block of text that does not obstruct our view of the image itself. And that's the key difference here between any other slider that we've had to date. This has been requested by many users and it allows for keeping the view of the image completely unobstructed and not having to worry about making the text stand out over top of the images, as in changing the text color or size to make it readable. This widget also removes any concern over the amount of text you can include, since you can include as much as you want and it won't cover your image at all. We have a few different examples on our live demo here of various layouts you can do all with this widget. You can attach captions to any side of the slider, top, bottom, left, or right, and you can even apply links to the caption blocks as well. So let's jump over to Architect so we can explore the setup and styling options of this widget. I have a replica of the live demo page here that we just saw, but I'm going to jump into the widgets panel and implement a brand new version of the widget from scratch. So we can scroll down to media, grab our combo slider, and we'll drop it into a new row on our page. Sweet. Now it's not going to look like much at first since we haven't added in any images yet, but we'll get to that in a moment. In the settings panel here, as usual, we need to set up a unique ID, especially on this page since I already have a few instances of this widget. I'll make it content-slider-demo. Cool. And next to set up is our images and captions done here by list items. We get three here to start, but you can always add more by clicking add item. Let's click into the first one. And we get this side panel here with an image loader and our caption field. We also have the option for links, but I'm going to cover that shortly. Let's start by clicking Replace Image for our first item. And as expected, we get our Quick View Image Picker where we can upload our own images or simply do a search for some stock imagery. Let's do a search for clothing. And any of these will work. Let's use this one with the shoes. Awesome. Now for a caption, I could type something simple, but one of the strengths of this widget is the large amount of text that is supported. So what I'm actually going to do is drop down here to one of our demo sliders, and I'm just going to grab some of the paragraphs that are already typed up. I'll do a simple select all and copy. And then we'll go back to our slider. Click back to list item one. And paste the caption inside. Perfect. Let's go to our list items over here and click into item two. We'll click our image loader again. And with the same search, let's grab this one of the dude in the jean jacket here. Now when you're selecting images for your slider, keep in mind that you don't have to use all images that have the exact same dimensions, but it's a good idea to keep them similar, or at least the same orientation. The slider will always display all images at the same size, so however you size the whole slider, that's how all images will be displayed, and the widget will crop them as needed. So the wider variance of size that you use will just mean more cropping will occur. Cool, so I'll drop down to our demo slider once again and grab a different paragraph. And copy that. And we'll jump back to our list item 2 to paste it in there. Perfect. And into list item 3. Click into the image loader. And let's get this woman here with the shopping bags. And back to our demo slider once again, we'll grab a third paragraph. And then back to our slider. And we'll paste it in our third list item. Sweet. Now let's close out of the settings panel for just a moment. As you already noticed, once you load in an image, you'll be able to see your slider in the editor here, which is awesome. So now let's talk about sizing the slider. You can size it any which way you want, but as I mentioned, all images will display the same size. So for best results, you'll want to use images of similar aspect ratios and size the slider accordingly. That'll result in the least amount of cropping of your images. Now you can adjust the width of the slider by grabbing the blue handle on the bottom right corner and physically dragging it throughout your row. And as you do that, the slider will do its best to adjust in real time here in the editor. But if it doesn't appear 100%, either the image sizing or the text placement, don't worry, it'll always appear correct in a preview or a publish. And if you want, you can always give your browser a refresh here in the editor to force it to reload properly if needed. So that's how we adjust the width. Now to adjust the height, we want to jump back into the panel. And our next option below the list items will allow us to do just that. 
So if we need a little bit more height to these images, we can just punch this slider up as needed. Now let's run down the rest of these options we have here. Slides to show. Now this setting allows you to set the number of images that will show at once. So similarly to how we saw in one of our demo sliders before where there were several visible, you can set that here. And following that is slides to scroll. Now this allows you to scroll a certain number of slides per scroll or per click. Now you'll only want to use this if your slides to show is set to two or more. Also, this functions best when you set it to something that's divided evenly to how many slides are shown at once. Now, for example, scrolling three slides is a nice fit for sliders that show three or six slides at one time. Or scrolling two or four sliders is best for sliders showing four slides at a time. Infinite scroll, this allows the slider to return to the beginning slide and continue looping after the last slide is reached. So let's go ahead and toggle this on. Following that is center mode. This option displays partial images on the right and left slides of the slider, creating that classic carousel look. And as usual, this mode is best used when an odd number of images are shown at once. Arrow navigation allows you to toggle on or off the navigation arrows for the user to slide through themselves. We'll leave these on. And then dot navigation, similar to arrows, but done with pagination dots that will appear below the captions. So let's go ahead and toggle these on as well. Now for autoplay, we can click into this and we get a side panel here where we can enable autoplay. So let's go ahead and do that. And we also get the ability to determine the speed of the slides as well as an option to pause the slide with a mouse hover. So that's pretty cool. Now before we do a final preview, let's click over to our design section. It's quite a few options here as well. Starting with content position, this sets the position of the caption content text block. So you can pick from top, bottom, left, or right for where you want the text to sit in relation to the image. Now these next three options allow you to customize the position of the captions, but these really only apply when you have the content position set to left or right. Content side margin, this sets the margin next to the content block. And content padding, this sets of course the padding inside the content block between the block edge and the text. And finally, content alignment. This sets the alignment of the text within the content block. Again, all of those are for when the content position is left or right, but gives you a lot of control therein. Beneath that, we have text style. So all the normal styling options you're probably used to. We've got font, size, color, format, all that good stuff. Let's just go ahead and give this a center alignment since we've kept it on the bottom of our image. Cool. Scrolling down to content background color, this will put a background color behind the captions, or you can simply leave it on transparent as it is now. Or if you want rounded corners of your content block, you can add them here with this slider. And then finally, navigation style. We click into this and we get another side panel here allowing you to style up the arrow and pagination dot color, as well as the opacity and padding of the arrows. I'm just gonna make the arrow color white so they show up a bit better on our image selections here. Perfect. Now let's close out of the panel and give this a preview. Everything's looking great. We can navigate with both arrows and the pagination dots. We've got our paragraph scrolling nicely with each image, allowing for infinite looping as we set it. And with just a few minutes of setup, we've got a beautiful and interactive slider setup capable of supporting large bodies of text that don't obstruct our images whatsoever. Really quick before I close out, I want to jump back into the editor and go into the settings panel once more. And I'm going to click into a list item and we're going to click into link. Now this side panel allows you to assign a link to any content box and this probably looks familiar. It's the same type of linking settings that you'll find pretty much anywhere else in Architect. Just keep in mind any links you add here will be applied to the caption box as a whole. Now we always try to provide the option for links to the actual image sliders, but since this type of slider doesn't have any text over the image in the form of any titles or buttons or otherwise, it's a bit tricky to apply the linking to be clickable on the image itself. So just note that for any links applied, you'll want to click the caption block and you'll be good to go. So that's our new combo slider widget. Thanks again, as always, for watching. We always love your feedback and we appreciate your comments and suggestions, so don't hesitate to reach out to us anytime. And if you run into any issues here at all, we'll be glad to assist. So thanks again, and until next time, take care and have a wonderful day.